Nike React Foam and Adidas Light Strike Foam are two of the hottest midsole shoe foams on the market right now, and they're being talked about in just about every athletic circle out there from basketball, running, tennis, just about everywhere because Nike and Adidas are starting to use this new technology in all sorts of sports that they make shoes for. But number one, what are they really made of? Number two, what athletes are they suited best for? And more importantly, number three, are they right for you? Let's find out. Hey, what's up, Zach here, YouTube Foot Doctor, and today we are going to be tearing apart Nike React Foam and Adidas Light Strike Foam, and we're really going to be delving into what are they really made of, and who should really be buying them, and who should be avoiding them. All right, so let's start with React Foam. This is Nike's brand new shoe foam design. Now, what's interesting about React Foam is, is it is made from EVA and expanded thermopolyurethane. What that means is you're getting an actual true lightweight EVA foam mixed with a plastic based midsole shoe foam. Now what that is going to do is give you the moldability and kind of the airiness, lightness, comfort of EVA, but with the performance, a little more bounce of ETPU. Now Nike claims that React Foam is gonna be 11% softer and give you 13% more energy return. Now where they're getting these numbers is, number one, it's gonna be softer because it incorporates really lightweight EVA and it's gonna give you more energy return because it has those plastic particles, those more elastic particles built in and kind of synergized with the EVA. And what I actually do like about this chemical process is because EVA is known to bottom out really quick just because it has those cells and they can compress and once they compress, they kind of stay compressed. Whereas ETPU, that's expanded thermopolyurethane, more plastic, when the cells compress, they spring back to life. So combining the two foams really does give you the best of both worlds. But because React Foam is still EVA based and it is still pretty soft, it is not good for lateral movement. So in the running shoe line of Nike where they use React Foam, here in the Pegasus, it goes all the way through the shoe. I really like it because in running, you're just going straight up and down. So you're really able to utilize the energy return of the React Foam because you really need to give React Foam energy to get anything back. It's not just gonna propel you forward. It's not like the Vaporfly Next Percent or the Alpha Fly with a carbon fiber plate in it where it really springs you forward. The React React Foam really does need kinetic energy to work. Now in basketball and tennis, I'm not a huge fan of React Foam because I do think it is a little soft and it doesn't give you a lot of lateral stability to cut. So as you see here in the Vapor Next from Nike, they're really only using React Foam here in the arch area, which I do like because it's going to give you a little bit more arch comfort, but they use this regular Nike Foam in the rest of the shoe because you need that for stability on cutting. And in the case of Adidas Light Strike, well Adidas Light Strike is basically Adidas Bounce Foam and for lack of a better word, light. It's just a little bit lighter and airier version of Adidas Bounce Foam because it's a less dense foam. There's less of those cells in there. There's more air in there, so it's a little lighter, gives you a little more bounce. However, once the shoe gets a little older, and I mean not that much longer after you wear it, it is going to start deforming a lot quicker because there's just not as much density in the foam to hold your foot up. It just can't hold your body weight as long as, say, Adidas Bounce Foam does, Boost Foam, or React Foam. And so when Light Strike is brand new out of the box, it really does give you a lot of pop out of your step. It does feel really light underfoot. And unlike React Foam, it does give you a lot of lateral stability as well as kind of up and down bounce. So what I really liked about this was when I first put it on, I could really make sharp cuts with it. I really felt ultra stable underfoot. However, after just a few times wearing it, I could already start to feel my heel starting to sink into the shoe. Now that's gonna really be true for runners, basketball players, tennis players, really anything. Because especially if you're running, you're gonna be hitting the exact same spot on the shoe, if you have a consistent strike, if your gait's consistent, then the same spot on that EVA foam is gonna keep getting compressed. So you really better wear a pair of inserts in these or only use them for a race day shoe because if you use these as regular trainers, they're just gonna get worn out in the same spot and you can lead to chronic repetitive injuries. Now with tennis or basketball, sports where you're constantly jumping up and down and putting a lot of body weight coming down onto the shoe, these are going to wear down really quick. There's even blogs out there where you can actually see pictures of how the shoe has creased up. I'll leave a link in the description of the blogs below. You can actually see the pictures where the midsole is starting to crease more only after a little bit of wear. And I have seen instances where people have said even after an hour or two in these shoes, they have started to see visible creasing in the midsole. And I, that really doesn't surprise me because if it is just a lighter and less dense version of bounce foam, that means that there's not as many cells to hold your body weight up. And if there's not as much to hold your body weight up, eventually the midsole foam is gonna give. 
So who are these foams best for and who are they not so great for? Well, I think starting with React Foam, I think React Foam is great for road runners. I really do think that React Foam does protect your joints better than some other foams will just because of that mixture of the plastic and EVA. I really think the compression that you do get in that foam and the energy redistribution of that foam really lends itself well to road running. Trail running, I think to a certain extent, I do think that that foam could compress a little bit on uneven surfaces and it might not be the most stable out there for lateral stability. So I will say road running more than trail running. I think in terms of basketball and tennis, I do think Nike has to refine it just a little bit more of where they want to put that React foam in the shoe. I do think the arch area is a great idea. I just think for lateral stability, if the shoe is made of a lot of React foam, you are going to start to see that shoe just compress a little bit on the outsides and you won't get that really sharp lateral stability or that ability to really make sharp cuts either on the basketball court or tennis court. And what's interesting about Adidas Light Strike Foam is I really think it suits just about everybody really well for short bursts of use. So if you're going to use it, number one, like I said, as a race day shoe, it's going to feel great because it's going to feel nice and light under your foot and it is going to give you just a little bit more pop out of it than some other foams will. However, it's just not going to last you all that long. In basketball and tennis, I do think it is a great match day shoe because you are going to feel a little bit lighter on your feet. In tennis, your split step, your side to side movement is going to feel really good. In basketball, making cuts or juking is really going to feel nice in this shoe because it's just not going to weigh you down. You're going to get some of the same performance characteristics of some heavier foams in a lighter package. Just remember, you're going to bottom it out faster too. But of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Nike React Foam and Adidas Light Strike Foam. Have you used them? What have your experiences been in the sports you've been playing? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to stay up to date on some of the newest shoe innovation we've been seeing recently, make sure you click into the playlist up above and subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next video.